Hi gang! I'm going to show you what amplitude modulation is using this super simple AM radio transmitter. I'll also show you some of what's going on in the transmitter circuit, a bit about how it works, and what I learned when I put it together. Before I can explain what amplitude modulation is, I need to explain why it's done. The place to start is the source of the sound, in my case this CD player. If I connect my oscilloscope to the output of my CD player, I see that the waveform it's putting out looks like this. Pretty random looking. That's called the audio wave. Audio means sound. Now here's a crystal radio which will be receiving my transmitted wave. And here's where it receives it, at the antenna. The problem is that there are all sorts of waves arriving at the antenna. So how can it pick out my audio wave from all the rest? The answer is that it can't. But one thing this radio can pick out well is waves that are all the same frequency. That means the distance between each peak is the same. However, the input from the CD player looks like this. The distance between the peaks is nowhere near the same. There's no one frequency. But I can make a new wave that looks like this. Notice that the general outline is my audio wave. But in reality, it's made up of a single wave that's all the same frequency. This is called the radio wave. And that's what's called amplitude modulation, or AM. The height of a wave is its amplitude. I took this single frequency wave with its constant amplitude and used my audio wave to modify or modulate its amplitude throughout. Now that you know what the radio wave that the transmitter puts out looks like, let's look at the transmitter itself. It's a very simple AM transmitter. It consists of some batteries, a transformer, and an oscillator chip. It's not a very good transmitter. It broadcasts a lot of extra frequencies at the same time that it shouldn't. But its simplicity makes it ideal for this demonstration. Once again, I disconnect the CD player from the transmitter and look at just the CD player's output. So it's just this part of the circuit, and I'm looking at the output here. I see the audio wave. Notice the peak-to-peak -peak voltage is around 1 volt. Now I connect the CD player back to the transformer, but disconnect the transformer from the rest of the transmitter. So it's just this part of the circuit, and I'm looking at the output here. Looking at the transformer output, I see it's the same waveform, but the peak-to-peak -peak voltage is off the display. So I zoom out in terms of the voltage. The peak-to-peak -peak voltage is now around 10 volts. The transformer has stepped up the voltage. Now let's look at just the oscillator. It's a simple chip that's connected to batteries to power it. I've already disconnected the rest of the circuit, so I can see what it does by itself. I connect the battery positive directly to the oscillator. I also add a wire, and put the ground probe on battery negative, and connect the other probe to the antenna. On the diagram I'm looking at just this, and the output is between battery negative and the antenna. The output looks like a solid thick line, but that just means I need to zoom in on it time-wise. Notice that it's the wave that is all the same frequency. This one is around 1.8 MHz, or 1.8 million cycles per second. But notice that its amplitude is the same always, around 6.3 volts. Now let's put the whole circuit back together again. I'm looking at the output between the antenna and battery negative again. I see the 1.8 MHz frequency wave produced by the oscillator again. But notice that now, the amplitude keeps changing. I zoom out time-wise to a lower frequency. At some point I see the original audio wave from the CD player and transformer. But it's all filled in with black. Not really. That black is just a higher frequency radio wave whose amplitude is modified by the audio wave. I'll zoom back in time-wise to show this again. And there's the real wave behind it all. The radio wave with its ever-changing amplitude. The amplitude is being modified or modulated by the output of the CD player and transformer. It's being modulated by the audio wave to produce the radio wave. And that's what I put out on the antenna and transmit. How does it work? As I showed you, with just the batteries connected to the oscillator, like this, the oscillator output looks like this. The batteries supply the oscillator with a steady 6.3 volts, which is what I measured. The oscillator takes that steady 6.3 volts and chops it up into 1.8 MHz waves, with the bottoms of the waves at 0 volts and the tops at 6.3 volts. But with the circuit complete, the oscillator now gets its input from what the batteries and transformer together supply it. What is that? The batteries and transformer are connected with what is called a series connection. And when you connect things in series like this, their voltages add up. Without the batteries, the transformer's output wave goes on either side of zero volts, both positive and negative. In fact, when I connect the batteries to the transformer like this, the result I get is this. With the battery's 6.3 volts added to it, the wave is now entirely above zero volts. And with the circuit complete, that's what the oscillator gets as its input. 
And just like before, the oscillator chops that up with its own 1.8 MHz wave that spans from 0 volts to whatever the transformer's wave's voltage is. Of course, as we saw, the oscillator's 1.8 MHz wave is a lot more compact than this and ends up appearing as solid black on the oscilloscope. And that's what's used to transmit out on the antenna. Well, thanks for watching. Check out my YouTube channel, Rimstar.org, for more videos like this. That includes one on how to make this super simple AM transmitter used in this video, another very detailed one on how the crystal radio works, and for variety, one on how radiation works, using an americium pellet as the example. And don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos, or give a thumbs up, or leave a question or comment below. See you soon.